You what? You're an evolved monkey? That's what you are? So you may think you look a bit like a monkey, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I've got some hairy legs. You might want to put a number three on them, like. But you know, so you're not, you're perfectly in the likeness of God. You're not, you're not just a, you're not an animal. But you think, you know how stupid it is. Because you're, you're there doing that and that's how we, that proves that you know how stupid that is. Animals are good. Animals are good? I'm proud to be an animal. But you're not an animal. You're a man. No, no. When you die, see on the news, it, when you die, and we bring out your funeral notes, it won't say this animal died. It'll say this man died. You're a man. You may think you're an animal, but you're not. I know we live in a world where you can think, but you can be whatever you want to be. You can be a camel, you can be a woman if you want to be, you want to be a man, be a man. No, you are a human, you are not an animal, okay? And when you die and stand in front of God, God is going to judge you as a human. He's not going to judge you as an animal, is he though? He's not going to be like, oh yeah, you're the one with the hairy legs. You're the one who was the monkey. You know, you know, he's not going to do that. He's going to go, no, you, you were that man. You have a life. You have people in your life. You've done things with your life. You've had a job in your life. You, you've spoken things in your life. You've thought things in your life. He's not going to treat you like an animal. He's going to treat you like a man. I don't believe there is a God. You don't believe. And I've, and I've already just shown you. Psalm 14, verse 1. Written by an animal called man. <laughs> the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Exactly, but what you're saying is kind of a reflection of like what you are on the inside. No, it is. That's what Jesus says. You're a good man, I'm a good man. I, 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 was, I was once a very bad man and I got forgiven. If you've not been forgiven, you're still bad. Oh, teacher, forgive me. I mean, let me ask you, like, are you good though? How good are you? Well, the, well, well, I would disagree a little bit because like one of my fundamental statements of just in the past 10 minutes has been there is a God and one of your fundamental statements has been there is no God but you know so you might want to come across like you know you, you, you want to listen and listen listen I appreciate that you yeah, absolutely do I'm, I, like I think we can have different opinions and we can like we can talk and we just we discuss things amen all day long Lo I love that we even live in a nation that is somewhat allowing freedom of speech, right? But when it, you know, when it push comes to shove, it's like, yeah, but this word says certain things about your life. And are you just gonna write it off as the word of man? Guys, watch the tram. You know, are you just gonna write it off as like, word of man? Let me ask you, like, have you ever read about Jesus? Not about what BBC said about him, but have you ever read the words of Jesus? What do you think of the words of Jesus? Just out of curiosity. Highly edited. We're not sure we are the words of Jesus. And the Bible is a good book because it's had so many editions. Okay, can you just you, you, can you just name one example of a of a scripture that Jesus spoke and it has been changed over the course of time? Uh, let him without uh, sin. What well, you talk about how the different manuscripts have one? Actually, it hasn't yeah. changed over time. Jesus didn't speak English. Yeah. The Bible refers to sheep. Like when they, when, when they took the Bible to Iceland, they didn't have a sheep. They had to call it a seal. Right, so listen. The Bible has not been changed because God was in control of it okay now think about it right god made you he made the the expanse of the heavens he made everything if god was powerful enough to create all existence why was he not powerful enough to preserve his word he was we know he is now let me ask you this right jesus said some things that were some pretty big claims and i would think that if we really wanted to corrupt the words of Jesus, we would have just completely 
change them to such a, a degree that they would be unknown. But you can't make up a Jesus. You can't make up the Jesus of the Bible. Okay, so, so let's check this out. W would perhaps one of the benefits be power and money? Yes, the church has collected millions of millions. Check this out, right? Check this out. If, if men who, who, were, who were powerful enough had changed the Bible to increase their power and wealth, they did a pretty bad job of it. And, I, and I'll tell you why, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why, I'll tell you why. Jesus says, sell all that you have and give it to the poor. Didn't he also say, give unto Caesar what is Caesar's, i.e. taxes and stuff? Yeah, yeah. and the, what, what did he say after that? What did he say after that? I don't know. And give to God what's God's, what's God's? Everything, right? See, Jesus was making a point. See, you take that's a bit of a different context. Can I just bring it back to but let me just bring it back a bit. You see, if someone wants to use the Bible and they have the power to change it, and they want to change it in such a way that's gonna bring them power and authority, then they've done a pretty bad job in history. Because Jesus says so many things that literally stab in the heart of a rich man. Jesus says it's easier for a camel to fit through an eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to get into the kingdom of heaven. I, I think he got that wrong. Okay. I, I think it's easier. Jesus got that wrong. Yeah. No, 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 no. Jesus yeah. got that wrong. Jesus got that wrong. Yeah. Come here, sir. Let me hear you, Papi. You, you hold it for him, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, should Right, um, right, uh, oh, I'm embarrassed, I don't know how you can do this. You do this, he does it well, doesn't he? Yeah, he does it well. Because he's got it in his heart, but... Because I care about you, see, I want I, you to know the Lord. I, you see, I, I don't believe it, because I don't believe all the iconry like me made up things like, you know, why do you need candles and angels and Christmas trees and all, all these little things to elaborate what you're thinking and make it more... It's like when you buy a car, if they include a car freshener, you're more likely to buy it. Yeah. You know, it's all this, all the cosmetics. Two, two sex, dude. Like child, you know two, that? Two, oh, yeah, yeah, he, no, he's alright. Sir. Yeah, <laughs> alright, sir, you, come back. You sir, you've got to have the, you got to have the patience like me, mate. you just got to like focus, focus. Yeah. Now, now listen to this, right? You know like Christmas trees and stuff? Yeah. They're not in the Bible, okay? I know like some people come along and they'll be like, they'll start doing all these traditions. I'm not even, I'm not here to defend traditionalism. I'm here to defend the word of God. I'm here to like, well, I'm not even really here to defend it. I'm trying to like get you to be confronted by it. So then you can be, so then you can actually make an informed decision. Because I feel like, I, and I might be wrong, but it feels like perhaps some of the decisions and, and views that you have of the Bible, you've kind of came to, not because of the Bible itself, like you've actually read it, but more because of, you know, maybe what you've been listening to, or what you've been watching, or what you've, how you've understood Christianity, or, or maybe you've just observed churches and Christians, and you're like, oh yeah, I know what you do. But listen, I would go back to the Word of God. You know, Jesus says this, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds by the mouth of God. Well, what's he saying there? Well, he's not saying this. He's not saying to physically survive, you need to eat the Bible. What he's saying this is that our true knowledge and, and the growth of our wisdom and the growth of our true spiritual lives is dependent upon knowing this word. Now the great thing is this, it's 2023. The last book in this Bible, Revelation, was written 90 AD, perhaps earlier. Some say 70, just after 70 AD. God's been so kind, not only to preserve it, but to also translate it in the 1500s by William Tinsdale so that we could actually understand it, at least in Old English, now we have more common English, so that me and you can wake up in the morning, we can open our Bible and we go, wow, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. See, God's very kind. And you know what? You know what God says? Check this out. There might be some like cults out there and they get the Bible and they like start changing it. Yeah. But you know what God says? God says, if anyone takes from my word, I will take his name from the book of life. 
So we've got very yeah. serious about anyone who tries to crop this word. Yeah, I was a, I was a printer, yeah? And what are the, uh, I was a newspaper printer for a long time. And there'd be, we'd print something wrong, and we'd print an apology if we got a, a name wrong or a detail wrong. I noticed that the, the, the Bible has had several revisions. Uh, does that mean that the Bible wasn't quite right? And who decides how to revise and edit the Bible? Well, yeah, good question. So what you have to understand is it relates to revisions. These men are working with the Hebrew and the Greek and, and some are maybe Aramaic and they, they're trying to understand and translate. So in times past, there has been times where they've like, why did we translate it like that? Because if you look at the surrounding context, it obviously meant something else. We have to understand that never changed the message. It was just rather a better choice of words. Now let me explain. You said some things today. Well, imagine if I recorded your words, which I I I've got. I don't even know if it is recorded. Yeah, but, with them. Yeah, I want oh, them thank well. you, thank you. Oh, thanks, my best friend. Yeah, thank you, mate. Nice thank you. So now I might say to someone else what you said and i might use a different word but it drives home this the same point right exactly but the, the, that, that's there you know like if you, you like for example if you you can find out the original greek the hebrew you can see the direct translation of what that would be in english yeah but but it's there it's there now now so yeah, we, we might we might have a little like disagreement on this word and, and maybe that word but but the whole Bible has one message and it's very clear. It's that man is desperately in a bad place. He's a sinner. And Jesus Christ is the promised Messiah. And he fulfills all of the prophecies. And he dies on a cross for sinners. And he rises again from the grave. Yeah, now... That, that's the... Like, and like, because... Yeah, go for your, your point, I'm sir. Sorry. When he rises... Right, I've been talking to the people over there. The... Uh, Again, a, a good moral, a moralistic people. Yeah. Well, they're, they're based in America. And they're preaching similar things, but they, it's like the Catholics, they, they, they concentrate on the Madonna, they concentrate on the angels and things. Um, you maybe see a cross and you feel all, all warm and nice inside. It does, does nothing to me. Some people yeah. have rosary beads. Oh, yeah. Well, but yeah, a great question. So in First Corinthians, it tells us that the, the, the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. Yeah. So like in my first 20 years of my life, I didn't know the Lord, hated Christianity, hated God, and I hated the Bible. And every time I saw a cross, I would just, I, I'd have similar, I would have no affections about what, you know, Jesus done. The difference is, is that one day by God's spirit, God woke me up to the, the, the very realities and dangers of, of my own sin and showed, showed me Christ. So at one time it was um, foolishness to me, but now it's the wisdom of God. And God used the foolishness to actually end up converting me. See, this is the wisdom of God. He takes things that are, sh are, are shameful and despised and he uses it to actually magnify his power and show his glory. He's always done this in scripture. You may think of like Moses, right? Like, they're confronted by the Red Sea, they've got the strongest army behind in Egypt. Obviously, it's all bad news, right? But what happens? God parts the Red Sea and then swallows the enemies of Israel up by the Red Sea. You see, God used that very, that, that, that weakness ahead of them, that thing that was going to destroy them, to actually destroy his enemies. And God does that all the time. If you ever meet any Christians, like true Christians, and it, this is going to answer you other thing. You know when you get people, they like to talk about angels a lot? Yeah. They like to talk about this and that. Be careful about them, people. You want to hang around with people who make much of Christ. Not angels. Yeah. Jesus. Because all the angels in the Bible, do you know what they all did? They all looked to Jesus. So, remember John in Revelation? John gets down on his knees, starts worshipping an angel. The angel says, don't do that. Worship's reserved for God alone. When they bow down to Christ, Christ says, Flesh and blood's not revealed. Well, yeah, flesh and blood's not revealed to you, but my Father in heaven. So, Christ wants you to be thinking about Him. The way that you're going to do that is by going to this word, 
that this might be your stumble, but you're gonna have to come. You're gonna have to come to this word about your presuppositions, and I know that's hard, but you're gonna have to so, to find them. Yeah. So, so it's important to realise that just like a human being, Christ has an ego, but maybe a million times bigger, ten million times bigger the ego that I would have or you would have. I know you like the show busy mm. part of Christianity, but Jesus, to I mean, when's he going to do a gig? When is when is he going to do it all? When when will we see him to yeah. prove his existence? When you when when you humble yourself, he will come to you. But at the minute, you see, you you're not willing to accept okay. him. What sense? What sense do you use? You've got. They say you've got about thirty-two senses. Is it a sense of smell? Is it? Is it? Do you get the shivers? Yeah, it's spiritual. Yeah. So you have a soul, but it's dead. Yeah. You have a soul. But your your spirit is dead. And uh, that's you know like how I hated Christ and all that. Yeah, yeah. That was that was a manifestation of my deadness to God. So does that mean I've got to? Does that mean I've got to train my senses and, and get rid of all the noise of life? Yeah, that's a great that's a great point there. Some people have thought that in the past. What they've done is they've they've escaped and they've gone to a mountain and they they basically stayed in the mountain or like a cave until they find God. No, no, the Bible's quite clear. It says this: you need to repent and you need to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. As it relates to being made spiritually alive, that's something that the Spirit of God does. You can't make yourself alive spiritually. What you need to do is you need to repent. That's your responsibility. It's just, the way you're saying it is that, and I don't know the reason, it's like God has created us. Uh, kind of like incomplete, uh, not 90% as he wanted. Now, where's the efficiency in that? Yeah, you, you, reason? Genesis 3, the fall. Adam and Eve were made upright. They were perfect. But yeah. then the fall happened. So, you know, I mean, I would say it's more like, hey, maybe looking around right now, I wouldn't say 99%. I, I, I'd say that, you know, this is a dying world. It's, it, it's a horrible place. I, mean, I know it looks kind of nice. People are going shopping, but do you know, like, even in just a mile radius of us right now, just a mile radius, do you imagine the amount of evil that happened through the night last night in, in a mile radius. Oh, it could have, you might, be, oh, you, yeah. you might want to think about it. You have to understand this is Adam and Eve sinned against God. At that point, sin entered into the world. So the reason why things look like God did something wrong, it's not, it's man did something wrong. And man are reaping, his cons reaping Just, the consequences yeah. of his decision. So, if you say, I know you wouldn't, say you went on the bench and you broke a window, do you think it would be fair for the police to arrest you? And do you think it would be fair for the sins of the father to be upon, you know, your children and the grandchildren and your great grandchildren after that? Or do you believe in forgiveness? Yeah, well, I mean, you're bringing up a, a chapter there, and a, we can go to there, but I would just say this, is that <laughs> whatever punishment someone gets in hell, it's for their own sin. However, we all feel the repercussions and are guilty in Adam. Why? Well, Adam, being the first man, is our representative head. He represents all of mankind. So if Adam falls, we all fall with Adam, okay? Yeah. Not only humans, but even the world itself was brought under this subjection of decay and destruction and, you know, like things start to deteriorate and break down. That all started because of the fall. But uh, the Bible also teaches in Romans that even though we all die in Adam, we can all be made alive in Jesus upon faith. See, when we have faith in Christ, we actually inherit Christ's righteousness. So then you could also ask the question, well, how's that fair? Yeah, you're yeah do you know what I mean? They're like, like that's not fair. Like, I, I don't deserve but, but, it. But that, I don't deserve it, exactly. So this is the good news. It's like, yeah, you might, you could bring up Adam and how it's, how it's not fair that we, but then it's like, yeah, but if it wasn't for Christ, we wouldn't be able to inherit his righteousness. So if, if you support someone because of the great ego that Christ has, he rewards you. He makes you. He probably makes you rich. I've seen. I've seen pictures of the afterlife and everything. And people are wearing. Still wearing Marks and Sparks separates. They're wearing th things that are probably made in the sweatshops in heaven and stuff like that. So. Right. You know. You know. Like that, all I know is this: is that yeah. Jesus. 
you, you, keep, you say like a big ego, uh, that kind of sounds negative. You have to understand it's is... positive. All right, well, Jesus is worthy of worship. So like, even if Jesus never said, worship me, he is worthy. Just be by who he is. And, and we get that sense in even human beings. Like, there's certain people you meet and you have a sense of reverence for them because of who they are. Well, likewise, Jesus is the Son of God. He's like no other. So if you saw Jesus, I mean, the, the fact is, is that you are going to bow down when you see him. I want you to bow down to him now in humility and in salvation. I don't want you to bow down to him when you actually do see him in judgment. Yeah. don't want that for you. I, I, I want you to get to heaven. And let me tell you about people who walk around with nice clothes and stuff like that. Listen, I'm not saying a Christian can't have a nice pair of shoes. Look at my shoes, they're amazing. Yep. <laughs> but the thing is though, is that hate yourself. Well, I don't think what he's saying is this. Don't like don't literally hate yourself, stop punching yourself in the face and j jump off a bridge. That's not what he's saying. What he's saying is this, is the type of love that you have for him kind of looks like you do hate yourself. Like in other words, you always put him first, even though it's uncomfortable for you. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I get, I get Like, you know, think of a husband and a wife, right? A husband loves his wife, right, to death. And there might be times where it's difficult to love her, but it's the right thing to do, and he does it at the cost of his own comfort. But likewise, sometimes it's like that. It's like, I don't really feel comfortable doing this, but hey, Jesus, you say it, I'm gonna do it. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at what your word says and I'm gonna follow it. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try and you know like oh no, maybe you didn't maybe you don't mean that, maybe you mean something else. No, no. But what Jesus says, he means. If there's any man who meant what he said, it's him. Like there's a lot of things that I say even on up here, and I don't always mean them. And I, I don't get it always right. But Jesus, he always had it right. He always spoke the truth. And he always told us what needed to be said. Now listen, so you're 13 years old. You've got just over 3,000 weekends left until you're 70. Okay? You've not got that much longer, right? Now, 3,000 might sound a lot, but it's 2023 and 52 of them have already went last year. Is it 56 weeks in the year? I can't remember, 52. <laughs> 52. So, do you know what I mean? This life is going so, so fast, isn't it? Listen to this. You're not promised tomorrow. You're not even promised tomorrow. So I'm talking about when you're 70, but you're not even promised tomorrow. You could die today. But you know what? If you walk away today saying, I'm going to follow Jesus, I'm going to get a Bible, I'm going to follow everything he says, I'm going to trust in him as my only source of salvation, I'm going to follow him. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be fake anymore. I'm not going to, I'm not going to like be half in, half out. I'm going to follow him. My friend, listen, it doesn't matter if you die today, you'll go straight to be in heaven with him. That's, the, that's a fact. Thank you. God bless you, man.